Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to be looking at AP Psychology Unit 3, Development and Learning. So in this unit, we're going to dive into the fascinating journey of human growth from infancy to adulthood, and we're going to explore, explore how our behaviors, our thoughts, and our emotions evolve over time. We're going to cover developmental milestones, including physical, cognitive, and social changes, and investigate key theories by thinkers like Piaget, Erickson, and Vygotsky. Then we're going to shift to learning processes, discovering how we acquire new behaviors and skills through mechanisms like classical and operant conditioning. And by the end, you're going to gain insight into how our experiences shape who we are and how we interact with the world around us. This part of the unit or this part of the curriculum is about 15 to 25% of the exam. So let's get started. Okay. Oops. Okay, so we're going to start with 3.1, and this theme is its themes and methods in developmental psychology, okay? We're going to look at some key terms, and as usual, I'm going to make a separate video with the definitions and real-life examples for each of the key terms that go with this section of Unit 3. Okay, we're going to look at the CED question because that's always a great place to start. We know that the College Board uses the CED to make the exam. So, and I know I've, I was talking to one of my students who said the teacher was saying, oh, we don't know, you know, what's going to be on the exam. You absolutely know what's going to be on the exam. It is all in the CED. That's why they put the CED together. So it's really important to look at the essential questions that the CED put out and the essential knowledge that you need to know, which is what I've been covering in the videos. So we look at the question and we look at what the College Board wants us to know so that you are prepared for the exam. Okay, let's start with the overview of developmental psychology. So let's look at a definition of that. Developmental psychology studies how people grow and change over time from birth through old age, and it covers physical, cognitive, social, and emotional development. We want to focus on, what are we focusing on? We're con it considers both the chronological order, so like infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, and the thematic issues as well. So those are those reoccurring patterns in how development how about how we develop and how it occurs our goal is to understand how and why humans develop the way that they do and to address major questions about stability learning and behavior that changes over time so some of the key themes we're going to be looking at in this particular part of the unit three the 3.1 we're going to look at stability versus change are our, our traits stable or do they change over time? Nature versus nurture. And you've heard this before. We've done this in, I think it was unit one. Is our development shaped more by genetic inheritance, nature, or environmental influences, nurture? Continuity versus discontinuity. Does development happen smoothly or in distinct stages? And the importance. These, the these themes help psychologists identify patterns in development and answer fundamental questions about how people grow and change. So let's break those down. We're going to start off with stability versus change. So stability refers to the persistence of personality traits and behavior over time. And change refers to the potential for traits to evolve or adapt in response to experiences. So our key question here is basically, do early personality characteristics predict later outcomes or can individuals change significantly over a lifespan? So here's some examples. For example, for stability, a child who is highly conscientious may continue to be organized and responsible as an adult. Change could be an aggressive child may become more calm and controlled in adult adulthood due to social influences, learning, or personal growth. What is the significance here? It's understanding stability and change help in predicting long-term outcomes and in developing strategies for personal growth and interventions for behavioral problems. Now, remember, if you want the full slideshow, you'll have the link in the YouTube video below so you can see all the information that I'm talking about, and it's all written on the slides. I just do this easier because it's too much information to put on a video. Okay, so let's look now at nature versus nurture. So nature involves traits and characteristics inherited genetically, such as physical appearance, intelligence, or temperament. Nurture involves environmental influences, including experiences, culture, and education that shape behaviors and development. We've done this before. This is a review, okay? But here's a key question for us. To what extent are our characteristics determined by our genes, nature, versus our environment and experiences, nurture? So let's get look at some examples of nature, for example. So genetic predispositions may influence our intelligence, our risk for mental health disorders, or our athletic ability. 
Nurture, on the other hand, a child raised in a stimulating, supportive environment may develop better social skills and cognitive abilities compared to one raised in isolation. What is the significance of this? This theme is crucial for understanding various aspects of development, including learning, behavior, and psychological disorders. Most psychologists today accept a nature and nurture approach, recognizing that both genetics and environment interact to shape our development. Next one we're going to look at is continuity versus discontinuity. So continuity, the definition of it, of continuity is that continuity suggests development is a smooth and gradual process where change occurs in small steps over time. Discontinuity suggests that development happens in distinct stages where behaviors and abilities emerge abruptly and qualitatively different from earlier stated, stages. So here's our key question. Does development unfold continuously as we gain new skills, or does it occur in significant leaps through stages? Okay, so let's look at some examples again. Continuity. Language acquisition can be seen as a continuous process where vocabulary and grammar gradually improve. And I'm sure you're seeing this even yourself in high school. You are definitely developing better grammar, better vocab, which is a really good thing, by the way. Keep doing that. Also an SAT tutor, and you really do need to know that. Plus, it's really good in, in school. So it's always good to keep exposing yourself to that, that continuity of language acquisition. So basically, discontinuity, Piaget's stages of cognitive development propose that Children move through distinct stages, sensory motor, pre-operational, with different cognitive abilities at each stage. What's the significance of this? This theme is essential for understanding how cognitive, emotional, and social skills develop. Some theories, like Piaget's cognitive development theory, emphasize stages, while others, like Vygotsky's soci sociocultural theory, focus on gradual growth through social interaction. So these are those different th themes that you really have to understand in this section of the, of the unit three. Okay, so let's look at basically the applications in lifespan development. So we're going to start again with stability and change. So understanding which traits, for example, our temperament, our intelligence, which ones remain consistent over time and which ones are more adaptable, adaptable help in designing interventions for personal growth, mental health, and education. As a teacher, we actually look at this information so that we can mold the curriculum and mold our learning to the different ages groups that we teach. I've taught any everywhere from kindergarten to grade 12 and they're everybody's different you develop at different stages and as a teacher we need to see how do our traits change over time how does your learning change over time so early interventions for children with behavioral challenges can help promote positive change nature versus nurture Help psychologists and educators understand the importance of both genetics and environment in shaping outcomes like intelligence, personality, and mental health. Example, twin studies are often used to explore the relative influence and of genetics versus environment in traits like intelligence. Continuity and discontinuity provides insight into whether skills like thinking and reasoning develop gradually in stages. For example, cognitive development theories such as those by Piaget and Vygotsky offer different views on whether learning happens continuously or in stages. So you've got to learn both. You've got to see all the data that they have on both, all the research, because you could have a case study that actually asks you to evaluate this. These themes guide our understanding of human development and are used in fields like education, clinical psychology, healthcare to support healthy growth across the lifespans. So all of this is pivotal and very, very important in learning how people change, people grow, what is continuous, what is stable. All of these things are important. So make sure you understand each of these themes and how they relate with some examples. And they will be also on the key terms video. Okay, let's do a little quick summary of 3.1, just so we can wrap this up. Stability versus change. Do our traits stay the same or can we evolve over time? Nature versus nurture. How do genetics and environment shape who we are? Continuity versus discontinuity. Does development happen smoothly or through stages? And enduring impact of all of it, these themes in developmental psychology help answer fundamental questions about how we grow, learn, and adapt across different stages of life. Guiding research and interventions aimed at improving human well-being will propel us forward. 
So that's 3.1 themes and methods in development. So I'm going to do the key terms video next. So if you want to follow with that, you can see the definitions and the real life examples for all of the key terms that we saw in this video. This is really the CED and the essential knowledge that the College Board wants you to know. So like I said, if you want the full um, uh, slideshow that I have with all the information on it and a little workbook that goes with it, you can find the link in the um, in the description below. And if you like and if you enjoy these these videos, please subscribe. I'm loving seeing the numbers going up and I really love seeing the comments that you guys are leaving me and I do try to answer everyone. So thank you so much for that. I hope you're finding this helpful and I wish you success on if you're studying for the AP exam on that, if you're studying for a unit test on that as well. Have a great day. See you next time.